G'day everybody, Matt's right here. Welcome to another episode. And I'm pretty excited today because, uh, well, for the longest time, there have been uh, four people who I think are just the, the champions of Bitcoin. I love their ideology, I love where they're coming from, and they do everything they can to promote freedom and uh, Bitcoin. And I've been lucky enough to interview two of them in the past, Trace Mayer and Andreas Antonopoulos. And today I add my third cap out of the four, and that's Roger Ver. Roger, welcome. Thank you for such a great introduction. Who's the fourth, though? Um, ben Lorsky. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> that would be Eric Voorhees. So, yeah, so yeah, I, I just, all, all four of you guys just do such an amazing job. And so, uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, Roger, I, uh, I want to talk a lot about uh, what's coming up in the new year. And uh, we, we sit here today, late January 2015. But just before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about it. It's been a, a cracker of a year already, some exciting things going on. Um, probably most newsworthy is uh, Coinbase, just went out ahead and raised like $80 million or so. And uh, it's been an incredible um, journey for VC, uh, sorry, for Bitcoin with regards to VC money growing exponentially. I think 2014 ended out at nearly half a billion dollars in VC investment. And we see January, um, you know, another hundred million dollars added. And I think most importantly has been the, the, um, the, the types of people investing. So with the Coinbase round, we see that um, the New York Stock Exchange and some major banks were in that funding round. What are your thoughts on, you know, VC? seeing the direction and the significance of those kinds of things. Yeah, you, you made it easy for me. You summed it all up. I mean, Bitcoin's getting stronger year after year. All this amazing stuff's happening so far for 2015. We're on track to have more VC uh, investment in the Bitcoin space than in all the previous years of Bitcoin combined. So uh, anybody who's uh, not paying attention, you better start paying attention because Bitcoin <laughs> is, uh, is on the right track to change in the way the entire world's financial systems work. The other one, other piece of news, which I think is significant, although not quite as positive, was um, the Bitstamp hack. Uh, hack, uh, nearly five million dollars in funds stolen, and we just see this kind of thing, um, you know, happening here and there. Uh, I think EgoPay also was the victim of a hack. So we're in this system where, where, whereby, you know, Bitcoin is an amazing decentralized tool, and. Certainly the first iteration of um, businesses built on top of the Bitcoin protocol have been centralized in their nature. It creates these a hacker's wet dream, these huge pools of Bitcoin funds. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in terms of, is it possible to, to decentralize that? Are you excited about any particular pieces of technology that you think will, will help decentralize all those tertiary businesses and the, and the periphery businesses around the Bitcoin protocol? I mean, the, the right advice today is the same advice from a couple of years ago. And the point is hold your Bitcoin yourself in your own wallet in which you control the private keys. And that way you're much, much, much safer than letting your Bitcoins be held by some centralized institution. Um, we saw what can go spectacularly wrong with Mt. Gox. Um, luckily, Bitstamp handled things much, much, much better. But you never know what's going to happen with any of these centralized uh, Bitcoin uh, holding entities, whether it's a Bitstamp or, or any of these other ones. Uh, hold your Bitcoins in a wallet in which you control the Bitcoins yourself, and you're going to avoid a lot of trouble in the future. And uh, I think those are, are rules to, to live by in the Bitcoin world. Yeah, for sure. Now, do you have, um, you know, you're, you're, you're an entrepreneur in the Bitcoin space, you're an investor in the Bitcoin space. Uh, are there any projects that you know of coming up in 2015 that are particularly exciting for Bitcoin? Yeah, there's a... Uh Unfortunately, the one that I'm the most excited about, I, I can't tell you about yet. Oh. Um, but maybe in another couple of months, uh, you know, four to six months, maybe I'll be ready to, to talk about that one. But one that I'm really, really excited about actually um, uh, is Purse.io. And the reason why is I think that's a fantastic tool to bring new people in to start using Bitcoin. And what Purse.io is, it's, it's a way to allow um, anybody that is in a country that Amazon services to easily get 20, 25, even 30% discount from whatever you want from Amazon.com. And on the face of it, it sounds too good to be true, but the way it's kind of working is that uh, there's another service offered by Amazon called Mechanical Turk, where people in you know, all sorts of countries around the world that may not necessarily have a local Amazon can do easy tasks on the internet that are super easy for humans to do, but still too difficult for AI to do. And they can earn uh, what in their country is a very good wage, but maybe in the US or the UK or first world countries, it's not such a good wage. But Amazon currently only offers two payout methods for that. They can give you a US dollar check in the mail or uh, Amazon.com store credit. And if you're living in, let's say, Indonesia, neither of those payout methods are, are very uh, useful for you. But uh, that allows someone in the US or Japan or, where, or Europe to put 
wish list on Amazon, submit that wish list to purse.io, put some bitcoins on escrow with purse.io, and then this person in Indonesia will buy the goods for you at a 20, 25, 30, even 30% discount. You receive the goods shipped directly to you from Amazon, and then the person in Indonesia receives the bitcoins. The person in Indonesia is happy because now they have bitcoins that they can instantly convert into whatever they want, and you're happy because you got the goods direct from Amazon and with a 25% discount. So I see this as a really fantastic tool to bring new people into the Bitcoin space. So if you have a friend or family member or someone who had heard about Bitcoin but didn't have any interest because of the philosophical or economic reasons, just tell them, hey, you can order stuff from Amazon and save 25% by using Bitcoin. And that's enough of a reason for anyone to start using Bitcoin, and so I'm really excited about that one. Yeah, that's that is really cool. I know that Perstal has been around for a little while, and uh, last I saw that those uh, those discounts were about ten or fifteen percent, but they're now up to twenty and twenty five percent. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they've they've uh, gamified the way it works. So when you first sign up, the maximum discount they allow you to get on the first order, I think, is eight percent. And then on the next order is 15%. And then after three orders, I think they up it to 25%. And there's some sort of scale there, yeah. um, which may, which which uh, I think is, I'm not sure what their reasoning is for that. I think they should give people a, a bigger discount from day one. But maybe uh, they have some other reason for doing that. Now, you have a history of making some really big, bold predictions at the beginning uh, of each year. And you also have a history of those big, bold predictions coming uh, true. So uh, are there any big, bold predictions that you'd like to throw out there for 2015? Um, no, I'll play it safe at the moment. But uh, <laughs> thankfully, Bitcoin's so big at the, at, at the moment that other people are making big, bold predictions. So I believe Tim Draper, um, a world-renowned venture capitalist out of California, responsible for all sorts of incredibly interesting uh, projects. Uh, I think he went on record recently claiming that Bitcoin was going to hit $10,000 within two years. And uh, I think that's a, a pretty darn bold prediction, but I think it's more likely than not to come true. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Now, that is an interesting uh, question. We're on the topic of price here. We saw Bitcoin go up, I think, over, you know, 52x, I believe, in 2013. Uh, in 2014, we saw it pull back uh, really around about uh, 80%. Now. It's obviously a very wild ride, which is part of its lure, uh, certainly for me. Bitcoin is a fun, fun ride. You know, what do you think is going on there? And that, that's, you know, that's, obviously, we don't want to focus on price too much, but it's, it is an interesting uh, thing to, to work on. You know, what was the reason for these, these big price swings? And, and, and is there anything holding Bitcoin back moving forward? So la last year, I, I said on Twitter, and when I said it, it didn't seem, it seemed obvious to me. It just seemed like common sense. But I said the price is the least interesting thing about Bitcoin. And when I said that, all sorts of people got all excited and worked up about that. But I, I really think that that's true. If you look at the Bitcoin ecosystem today, it's stronger than ever before by leaps and bounds. Every, every week, it's stronger than the week before. There's just so much stuff happening all over the planet, making the Bitcoin ecosystem more useful to more people around the world. And the more useful Bitcoin becomes to more people, the more people are going to get involved and actually start using it. And because the supply of Bitcoin is limited, as the demand from all these new users coming on board increases the demand, the price of Bitcoin in terms of dollars or euros or pound has to increase in order to accommodate that additional demand. So uh, if you take, take a moment and look around at all the infrastructure that's being put in place and how incredibly useful Bitcoin is going to be to people all over the planet, the price is going to have to go up in order to accommodate them and not just go up a little bit. Like each single Bitcoin is going to have to be worth at the very least tens of thousands of dollars per single Bitcoin that's worth around $250 today. So in the short run, you never know what the price is going to do. It might double, it might drop in half in the next 48 hours. We don't know. But in the long run, you should be more bullish on the price of Bitcoin than ever before. Right. And I mean, for Bitcoin to fulfill its promise of being you know, a, a real disruptor in the currency space and, and affect you know, pretty much every person on the planet, it's obviously its market, cap, its market cap has to be significantly higher than its current $3 billion. Now, the, the share supply is increasing slowly at the moment, but it will never be above $21 million. The share supply cannot do any more than double than what it is right now. So in order for that market cap to go up, we're going to have to see the price of Bitcoin go up orders of magnitude if Bitcoin is to fulfill, fulfill its promise of uh, really changing the world of money. Uh, Roger, any other comments you'd like to leave us with? Yeah, one other thing I guess to keep in mind is that currently, to give you a scope uh, of the size of uh, Bitcoin in, in today's financial ecosystem, Amazon.com pays in credit card fees about the same value of the entire market cap of all of Bitcoin each year. 
Um, so Bitcoin is still incredibly small in the grand scheme of things, but it's just so incredibly useful. So uh, it's like like you said, it, it, if more people get involved, which they are, the price has to go up. And another interesting thing about Amazon, uh, I've mentioned in previous shows, but those fees that you're talking about, you know, throws three billion. Yeah, three billion dollars in merchant processing fees from Amazon. That's also equivalent to their their profit from the whole company. Meaning, right. if uh, all their transactions became Bitcoin transactions instead of credit card transactions, without selling one more product to one more customer, the profitability of that entire business would double. And that's just an seems indication. like a strong motivation. That's it's just, um, yeah, it's mind blowing uh, efficiencies offered by uh, the blockchain and Bitcoin. Really exciting stuff. Roger, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I look forward to catching up with you later in the year. Thanks so much as well.